This episode was sponsored by Skillshare. I'll have a link for you to try them out for free, so hang out until the end of the video. About a year and a half ago, I made a video on the Zero 018, a phone from a little-known Berlin-based company called Block. The hardware itself was a little underwhelming, but the software, that was exciting. It had a gorgeous monochrome user interface designed to minimize distractions, and looking at my comment section, everybody had the exact same question about it. Can we just get the software, but without the phone, please? Well, Block apparently heard you. While they say that the Zero 018 was decently successful and actually managed to sell out, they have now switched to what apparently everybody wanted, making the software but letting you use it on your own phone. This software is called Ratio. I've been using it for a couple of days on this OnePlus 7 Pro, which is their developer device. And yeah, I think they are on the right path. So let's take a look. So Ratio, at its core, is a new Android launcher. That simply means it's a piece of software that replaces the default home screen and menu system of an Android phone with a new one. But where most Android launchers are pretty much just a light coat of paint over an already familiar Android experience, Ratio wants to fundamentally change how you use your phone. Like its predecessor, Ratio is designed almost entirely around one goal to minimize distractions and to make you more mindful of your phone usage. And while it is no longer fully monochrome like Block OS was, it manages to look even cleaner and more minimalistic in my opinion, and still carries a ton of thoughtful design elements that help you rein in your smartphone usage. There are two main screens in Ratio for now, and the first one is what the company calls Drawers. This is sort of your home screen with a list of app icons that has a few neat tricks. First, you can organize your apps into folders like this that you can then easily expand or collapse with various pull-down gestures. These drawers then have little indicators that prominently show you how much time you've actually spent in each one of them. I like this design as it forces me to be more intentional about opening an app and shows me what I'm wasting time on right here when I'm making the decision of whether or not to open an app and not somewhere deep in my system settings. Long pressing any icon allows you to get more info about an app at a glance, like historical usage for example, and it allows you to customize its appearance. So for example, you can pick one of four colors that becomes the background of the tile, which lets you visually highlight apps that you use more often and deprioritize those that you don't. Or you could also easily pick another app icon for each app if you don't like the default one. At the bottom, you then get a bunch of options, of which color is my favorite. It basically allows you to toggle monochrome mode on and off on an app by app basis. So for my time wasters like Instagram and Twitter, I have those set permanently to black and white to make me want to spend less time in them. While apps like the camera or the gallery, where I really do want to see colors at all times to see if photos turned out well or not, well, those I just use normally with color. I tried to make monochrome mode work on other devices, but I always found that the all or nothing approach was a little too restrictive. So I really like this approach that is a little more nuanced and a little more customizable on Ratio. Now, Ratio does still provide a system-wide quick toggle for monochrome mode as well, which on OnePlus phones is a simple swipe up from the bottom right corner, but I find myself using monochrome mode on an app by app basis now. The lock option makes opening any app require biometric authentication, like this, handy for making your sensitive stuff a bit more private, and mute simply stops showing notifications for a specific app on its tile. Now, I won't go over all of the little customizations here as most of them are pretty self-explanatory, but overall this layout with drawers, I find it really nice. It does require quite a bit of tinkering up front to make it work exactly how you want it to, but I think the end result is both pretty and functional and does help you be more mindful about your usage. To the left of these drawers is a second screen that Block calls the root, which is a feed of cards that allow you to do quick actions by typing in what you want into this little text box. So you can just give it any random query, and by default, Ratio returns search results from Quant like this. But if you pick one of these suggestions or type something that Block actually understands, like Weather Budapest, for example, you will get little interactive cards like this. You can basically think of them as widgets that can be expanded or collapsed and either pull information from an online service like the weather card here or an app on your phone like the Spotify card here that shows you what's playing and lets you control the actual Spotify app on your phone. 
There are also some cards that I like to think of as basically mini apps, like this timer that you can just start by typing in timer and then the number of minutes, or like notes, which gives you a little card that allows you to take quick notes in it. These are a little more basic than full-blown apps, obviously, but I like how quick they are to access. Finally, there are a few more options, like tickets, which can show you upcoming flight tickets on a card or even on the lock screen, RSS feeds, YouTube searches, and many more. Anyway, these cards can then be deleted or pinned to the top like this. So I have the ones that I use all the time, like Spotify, like the weather for my city and my notes pinned up here, for example. The whole idea behind Root is to give you information at a glance and to let you get your basic things done without having to open the apps or your notification shade all the time, just to get sucked into something unwanted just because it was blinking at you. It's sort of a hybrid between a command line interface on the computer, a search engine and Android widgets, I guess, and I find it a very interesting experiment. Now, the last thing to show here is that you can also long press this little button to bring up a few more options like focus mode for making things look even less distracting and sun mode that apparently makes it easier to see things on a sunny day, which I can sadly not test due to being forced to work from home. But that's pretty much it for ratio. Now, you might remember from my video on the Zero 018 that beside these two screens, that phone also had a third one on the right. That one was called the Tree and it pulled all of your chats from various messaging apps like WhatsApp, Telegram and Instagram into one combined feed so you could talk to people from here without having to open an app and without accidentally getting distracted by social media feeds and whatnot. Ratio doesn't have a tree yet because to have one would require a lot of system level permissions and access to things like chat logs from within apps, which of course Ratio doesn't have on third party devices like OnePlus phones just yet. They told me that they were building an alternative because they can access incoming chat notifications and they can read the contents of those notifications and kind of assemble a tree out of those to create a chat app from that. Uh, which sounds very hacky, it sounds very experimental, but either way, it's just not here yet. What is here though, is one final cherry on top called the Block Desk. Desk is the Windows or Mac app that you initially use to install Ratio on your phone, and after that, it connects your phone to your computer over Wi-Fi. You can use it to access your photos and copy and paste them between devices, and it gives you full access to your file system on your phone as well, so you can, for example, drag and drop files between your devices without the cable. Your notes from their card in the root also show up here, and you can edit them from your computer as well, with syncing between the two that is almost instant. There are apparently more features planned for Block Desk in the future, like showing you your tree with all of your conversations on here, so you could theoretically use your computer to do all the messaging through your phone without having to install a desktop chat app in the future, and who knows what else. Now, both Desk and Ratio are still a little bit buggy. I've actually sent them a lot of feedback on little issues and bugs that came up while using the device. But to be fair, I think that's fine. I mean, this is pre-release software and seeing how responsive they were to my feedback and how quickly they iterated on the software of the Zero 018, I am fairly confident that they'll fix these issues before it actually launches. And you know what? Altogether, I really like where this project is headed. For connecting my Android phone to a Windows PC, I still prefer Microsoft's Your Phone app, as that works over any connection, not just Wi-Fi, and seems a little bit more reliable. But Blockdesk is extremely welcome on the Mac, as that platform really has no good wireless syncing solution of this caliber for Android phones that I know of. And Ratio itself is just a joy to use. I really like when companies try to reimagine user interfaces from the ground up, and this one feels more elegant and fluid than most. Both the bold design and the focus on glanceable information really remind me of things that I, and I think many others, really liked about the Windows Phone interface. And with the robust Android app ecosystem underneath it, Ratio might even succeed where Windows Phone failed. I really only have one concern with it, and that is that to do all the things that Ratio does, it needs to have access to a lot of your data, and you need to give it permission to a lot of sensitive stuff. Now that doesn't automatically mean that they will misuse this access and they have told me that they actually do all the processing on the device itself. They don't send any of it back to their cloud, but I'm honestly not technical enough to assess this claim. So all I'll say is that you're giving them a lot of access. So you really have to trust them to use ratio. 
Now, given that the company has stopped making hardware for now, you might also wonder how they plan to make money going forward. And based on my conversations with them, it seems like they'll charge some sort of subscription fee for Ratio. We'll see how that goes, and if I hear anything interesting from Block, I'll be sure to tweet it at TechAltar, so follow me there if you haven't already, if you want to keep up to date with the Ratio project. You can also already sign up to try Ratio for yourself over at Block's website, to which I've put links into the description. They are starting with OnePlus and Pixel phones, and I was told that they will follow that with some Samsung and Xiaomi models in the future. So yeah, that's what Block has been busy with. And you know, last year I had a pretty major crush on the Zero 18, despite all of its flaws. And this year I have an even bigger crush on Ratio. And the reason is pretty simple. I just love this design. What I find the most amazing about it is that this isn't anything complicated, just basic shapes, simple fonts, and a few colors that just happen to be arranged in a way that they look effortlessly elegant. If this sort of design fascinates you as much as it fascinates me, I recommend you to check out Aaron Dreplin's classes on Skillshare, which are easily my favorite graphic design classes online. Aaron is an absolute legend who creates beautiful logos, graphics, and illustrations, and he's a great teacher as well. He has two full series on logo design, one on word marks, another one on end-to-end -end design workflows, and more. You can watch his classes for free for two months if you are one of the first 500 to sign up for a premium Skillshare membership using my link in the description. And you'll also be able to access the thousands of premium Skillshare classes that cover everything from graphic design to photography, video editing, and more. Even after the trial ends, Skillshare is still a very affordable $10 a month. So check them out, happy learning, and I'll see you in the next video.